Well, uh, thank you so much for um, taking this call and granting this interview for Parterre. Um, and it's an honor to finally meet you on an online platform. Likewise, <laughs> sadly not in real. No, but, no. Uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy, <laughs> you know, that, that, that everyone was preparing so, so much for the Lyric Opera Ring cycle, but of course, recent geopolitical events have uh, made it impossible to uh, continue on with these with life it, as, it, as normal. I mean, I mean, when they announced, we still thought, oh, maybe that's a too early decision, you know, or, or why didn't they ask us if we can make or at least a broadcast? But looking back now, it was the right decision. We, we couldn't have done it. I mean, I I was then asked by my manager to go um, to Canada to uh, because they lost somebody in a production. And meanwhile, this production is also uh, closed. I mean, oh, <laughs> had to close as well. So, yeah. I think we underestimated the seriousness of the pandemic. Yes. And um, there's so many musicians, unfortunately, who are out of work now. But at the same time, it's really inspiring when you look at um, the internet, like Facebook or Instagram, you see many musicians um, congregating, not only like soloists who have access to pianos, but also orchestras congregating through uh, these yes. online platforms like Zoom. Yes, reminds me, I got to record tonight a line of uh, B, Beethoven 9, so this will be done by our <laughs> um, general music director. Well, you know, we have so many things we can talk about um, okay. over mm -hmm. the next hour or so, and I think um, you've had a fairly rich international career from which we can draw some experience, and hopefully we can start with some things. Um, let's start with the recent seasons, um, your recent seasons yes. um, on, the, on the international stage. And I think um, your first major breakthroughs happened in Salzburg earlier in the, dec in the last decade. Yeah, I find it um, interesting that as a former violinist, <clears throat> I dealt with all kinds of music. So I never had like, um, oh my God, this is modern or this is Baroque or so. It, it's just music. And the more you go into the modern, the more you find also a way to sing it more bel cantesque than, yeah. <laughs> than it sounds at first sight. And um, yeah, it's also nice because you discover something often in your voice that your voice is able to do things um, because you don't have this um, expectation from your ear. I mean, there is no Simeonato who, who was singing Soldaten or Gishwitz. No. Um, and so this all falls apart. Also the respect, because you have just to do it. And sometimes this is a good thing. Yeah, because Berg, for, for us now, it's almost like classic. I mean, it feels like that while we already moved on in the modern field, like more experimental in, in, in contemporary, yes. which is really <laughs> a different field. <laughs> I don't really know much about, unfortunately, don't, I know very little about current vocal trends in modern opera. You know, you have people like George Benjamin writing these um, operas in English, and Raimon still writes operas, of course, and you were actually, um, you actually start in the Frankfurt premiere, or the German premiere. Yes, my dear, mm -hmm. yes. Raimon. But Raimon writes pretty well for the vocals, and there, um, and also Beat Furra, from whom I did a piece in Hamburg, um, but there are, of course, also composers, they just experiment and they often do with the extreme. So like um, either very low for the female voice or very, very high. Yes. So it goes always to the extremes, very often. Now, if I remember correctly from one of our earlier conversations, you had mentioned that you were um, trained with an Italian technique. Uh, with such I think there were several <laughs> teachers they brought really essentials to my voice and my first one was a blind speech therapist who was uh, also a concert singer but she, of course she couldn't be on stage but because she was blind and she told taught me like a really healthy relationship to my voice so I mm. can almost well you cannot sense really your voice but somehow I I I think I can. So I can, in any, how can I say, defer the different sensations, they are there. Um, and this 
saved me through a lot of things. And then I started a normal training in, in Germany and in Vienna, which was good. Then I switched to the mezzo and then I started to, um, to, to know Alexandrina Milceva. Till then I was a lyric mezzo. Oh. And um, she told me, no, you're a dramatic mezzo. You should sing Eboli, you should sing Verdi Requiem, you should sing Amneris, you should... And I mean, for it was a shock and a dream in the same time <laughs> because I didn't have the volume, but it changed quickly because it, I just uh, learned a different technique to do so. One of the performances of yours that, is, that remains etched in my mind even today is your Valkyra Fricka from Chicago. The clarity of your vocal production and the warmth, and it's like there are all these different qualities that you don't, normally don't associate with, let's say, the traditional German mezzo-soprano. I know. Or maybe it's hard for someone to connect with it directly, but it's still so physical and, you know... It's myriad. physical. And I think it's, it's, it's when the, the, the harmonics are really in a right relationship to each other, then it's like, how you say Schwingung, oh my God. Um, you sense it more than you hear it, you know? Yes. You can immediately sense it in the same. You, you, sense all, you sense the sensation I have in the body directly. And yes. it makes you a good feeling. Yes, absolutely. And this is the, the point. And um, yeah, I always, I was longing for an Italian technique. And it was tough because as a German, you are almost not cast in the Italian repertoire. And I was always fighting for it. And in Frankfurt, they gave me everything. So I sang all my Italian um, roles. and. Um, and worked with Italian coaches and also still now Jack Livigny, with whom I'm still working from time to time. His father was a famous uh, uh, tenor from Sicily and um, <coughs> he's based now in New York. Uh, but yeah, and I think on this base, you sing different the, the German repertoire, although I also think the ancient German technique was much closer to the Italian mm. than it's nowadays. Nowadays, it's a bigger gap. It's, it's very clear. It's the, the German technique tends to produce very clear, um, almost like, I don't, I don't want to say Sprechstimme, but it's certainly, um, it doesn't quite have those overtones that is found in... Exactly, because it goes too much, sorry, from the speaking. The thing is, the Italian um, uh, speaking voice has the same harmonics like the singing voice, what you need for singing. So the vocal production, either you speak Italian or you sing Italian is the same. While when you speak German, um, the harmonics sits in a, in a, in a far lower spectrum. Mm -hmm. And if you sing like that, it, it, it lacks exactly that what you mentioned. So you have to pretend you do an Italian production and then put the <laughs> language above. <laughs> that it still sounds German. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's true. And, and we have to think that Wagner adored Bellini. Yes. So he knew about lines in music. And then he came from the big French opera, which you can hear very good in the, in the Flying Dutchman. Yes. Um, it's sometimes just a matter of interpretation also. You know, who is reading the music and in which way. <laughs> yes. But I was saying earlier is that if you would look at Wagner's career, um, it, it's so fascinating to see how he evolved as a composer over that entire period. You, you can see the influences of the world, the musical world around him, the Meyer, the Meyer beers and the Belcado yes. composers, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And you can sense this and you can sing like that as well. Of course, the text is important, but that doesn't mean, I mean, also in Italian music, in Verdi, the text is important. Oh, and um, you should deliver it as well as you do in Wagner. So there's no contradiction in that, I find. Would you like to talk about some of your work in Verdi? I'd like to talk about your work in Wagner and Strauss. Sure, sure, sure. What you're um, so famous for. But let's talk about Verdi and some of your other dramatic mezzo. Um, yes. Characters. So my first was already in 2006. It was Eboli. So I was, um, I did, I was still in Lucerne in a very small theater in Switzerland. And um, the mm. theater of Basel, a bit bigger than that, uh, was looking for a second cast Eboli because the main Eboli couldn't do like five performances. 
And I remember the audition was not really good, but they took me anyway because they knew me a bit. And um, yeah, it was my first experience. It was Calixto Bieto mm. uh, staging it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So very interesting, very physical. And it was a success. And oh my God, I loved it from the, from the start. And um, yeah, before I did the Verdi Requiem, that was my first big Verdi, let's say, role, because I think the Requiem is almost... Uh, an operatic piece. <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah. And then came Amneris, also in Basel. Uh, then I went to Frankfurt with Fenena, again Eboli. And then later uh, in 18, I did the uh, Trovatore, the Asucena. Oh, wonderful. So yeah, I did, I did the big, I did all of them. And it's, it's just a joy. Did you sing... Um... Rossini also, or I know, you, or any other other Italian composers. I started with Rossini. I I, I did my um, debut at the Vienna Kammer Oper, mm -hmm. which took place in the Schloss Theater of Schönbrunn. Wow! The second oldest theater in Europe, I think, um, and it was yeah Barbieri. <laughs> and. And I assume that, you know, right now, since you are gaining renown as a major Wagnerian talent, you've been seeing Venus and Kundry, you'll be making yes. a debut in Toronto next year. Have, these, have you seen less um, engagements in this kind of repertory or uh, is it still a mainstay of your career? No, it's, it's less. I mean, they don't believe you. There are a few really fantastic directors. They know it and believe it like um toronto frankfurt um and a few others they and and geneva with aviel khan um but many as soon as you sing wagner they think you cannot sing anything anymore <laughs>